welcome back now in this video i just want to show you how you can actually deploy a web application that can actually connect onto the azure sql database so in our earlier videos i showed you a terraform configuration file that could be used to deploy an azure web app and i showed you another file that can be used for deploying an azure sql database Normally, the case is you need to deploy the Azure web app, which will have a web application along with the database, and you'll have that infrastructure in place. So in this video, I want to show you an example on how you can achieve this. Now, here I have a .NET project. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2022 to open up this project. Now, please note that if you go on to the description for this video, you'll find the GitHub link in which you can actually download this particular .NET project. So I'll just go on to product app and open up the solution. So this application just connects onto the database server and it will display the information based on the data that is stored in the database server. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be ensuring that a table will exist in the Azure SQL database. There'll be some data in that table. And then this application will actually pick up the data from the table and display it accordingly. But this application is going to be promoted onto an Azure web app. And it's the Azure web app that will actually connect onto the Azure SQL database to get this information. Now, what are the major things that I've actually implemented for this web application very quickly? So if I go on to one of my classes, it's the product class. So I'm going to be displaying a list of products. Here I just have the product ID, which is of the type integer, the product name, and the quantity. I have a service that is actually used for fetching information from our Azure SQL database. Here I actually have the database server name. I have the username of SQL admin, the password as your other rate one to three and the database name. Obviously, if you are trying this along and if you're spinning up your own Azure SQL database server, ensure to change the database server name. And then I'm just getting the list of products via a select query and I'm displaying it. I then have a controller it's a product controller. This is used to then invoke basically an index page. So if I go on to the view, here I'm just displaying in a very simple tablet format, the details about the product. So I'm saying I'm not going into details about this application. Here we're just looking at the entire infrastructure setup. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll right click on my solution. I'll create a Git repository. Yeah, I'll keep the repository name as product app. I'll make sure it's a public repository. I'll do a create and push. So remember earlier on, we had deployed an Azure web app and we made sure it took the code from an external Git repository that's GitHub. So we are following the same approach here. The only difference is that we are now, you know, basically publishing a new application that has much more functionality that's actually going to connect onto our Azure SQL database. So we do have now our product app project deployed onto GitHub. Here when I go onto my repositories, I can see product app in place. And I'll be having my project over here. So I'm going to be using the same configuration file we had earlier on. This is for the deployment of the Azure SQL database. So we leave the Azure SQL database details as they are. We now want to add the resource definitions for our Azure web app. So what I'm doing is I'm adding the resource blocks, which you've already seen earlier on. This will actually, first of all, deploy an app service plan, and this will deploy our Azure app service as well. Here we are mentioning our GitHub URL, which has our product based application. Now we also need to ensure that our Azure SQL database accepts requests from the Azure web app. Now, one way of doing this is again via the firewall. If you look at 
the firewall and virtual network settings for your Azure SQL database, there is one setting of allow Azure services and resources to access this server. If you mark this as yes, then it does allow your Azure web app to access your Azure SQL database. Now, the way that you can actually implement this via a Terraform configuration file is again, by the use of a firewall resource setting. So here, let me just add that setting. So we've already seen this. Now, the only difference here is in terms of the start and the end IP address, you have to mention it has 0.0.0.0. So as per the Terraform documentation, when it comes onto the SQL underscore firewall rule, if you want to ensure that you implement this particular setting of allow Azure services and resources to access this server, then you have to ensure that you put this firewall rule in place. So currently with this Terraform configuration file, we have the deployment of our database server, our Azure SQL database, our Azure app service plan, our Azure web app. We have the firewall rules in place. Now, you can take this even one more step further, actually. See, what we can do is, we can also actually ensure that the table automatically gets created and the data is actually entered into the table. See, for the Azure SQL database, see, we already have the database in place and we want our web application to fetch information from this database from a particular table. So what you can do is you can actually right click on your mouse on the database. You can choose to execute a new query. And what you can do is you can actually just take all of this data, these statements basically. The first SQL statement is to create a table known as inventory. The inventory table has three columns, the product ID, the product name, and the quantity. And here we are inserting rows into the inventory table. I'm just inserting three rows that has this set of data. Now, I could very simply execute these statements and I'll actually have, if I do a select star from inventory, uh, let me run this. So I have my data in place. And in fact, if you run this application locally on your system, so this is from Visual Studio itself. So Visual Studio will actually use a lightweight web server to run your application. And now this is actually connecting onto that database table. It's getting the list of products via the product ID, the product name, and the quantity. So the only difference is that now I want to ensure that this app, this application, this project is published onto an Azure web app. We have our database in place and I can also in a way deploy the data. So it's not a direct approach that we can implement in Terraform for ensuring the table is in place and the data is in place. There is another way that we can actually achieve this. So Firstly, what I'll do is I'll issue the drop statement to drop the inventory table so we don't have it anymore. Now here I'm going to be adding one more resource block. Now this resource block actually use a special feature available in Terraform. Now this allows you to actually execute a local executable file. Now, SQL CMD is actually a command line utility that also allows you to execute SQL based commands against a database. Now, if you're on a Windows based machine, this SQL CMD file gets located in C program files, Microsoft SQL Server, Client SDK, ODBC 170 tools bin. So this gets automatically installed if you have installed SQL Server Management Studio. So again, just a roundabout way of ensuring that we can actually use the SQL CMD tool to have data loaded in our table. Here, in terms of the parameters, so with slash S, we have to mention what is our full server name. 
then we have to give the username which is SQL admin then the password which is Azure at the rate 123 what is the name of the database and then a SQL based file now what is a SQL based file it's basically the commands that we have executed here so if I copy all of this and here let me create a new file I'll select the language has SQL I'll just place this let me save this has init.sql so we have it in place so now our terraform configuration file is going to use this sql cmd file the sql cmd executable will actually connect onto the database using these credentials onto our database and it's going to execute this init.sql file and what does this file do it creates a table and it inserts data into the table so I want this infrastructure to automatically be in place my web application my database my database table and my data even if you just open up command prompt on your local machine and if you just execute the command SQL CMD So currently I'm getting an error because I've not given any details onto this command but this command will actually work because it gets installed with SQL Server Management Studio. Now let's go ahead and create a plan. So let me ensure that I fix these errors. So let's go on to line 88 and line 92 so on 88 so what's the name of our SQL server so I scroll on top so it's only app server so let me scroll down let's fix it here same thing here as well save all of this let me also replace it here let's try to create the plan again let me do an upgrade again so basically I'm also using the null provider as well so it needs to also get that Once it's determined what needs to be changed, let's do an apply and let's wait till this is complete. Once deployment is complete, let me go on to all resources and I should be having my web app in place. If I actually go on to the web app, the URL basically, I'll go on to a new tab. And now you can see our web application running in the Azure web app and this is connecting onto our Azure SQL database. Here if you do a select star again from inventory, you will see your data in place. So it has actually gone ahead and also run that init.sql script because remember earlier on we had dropped our table. So now the table along with the data has been deployed via a Terraform configuration file. So in this video, I just want to show you how you can deploy your Azure web app along with your Azure SQL database in a Terraform configuration file.